Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to another video of the top three stocks for this week. And my personal plan, what I plan to do, if I'm gonna short the market, if I'm gonna stay long, just my full plan, if I'm gonna hedge my portfolio or not, I'm just gonna be going through all of that. I'm not gonna be rambling on, this is gonna be action packed, just quick due diligence, research, and stock picks. I'm not gonna hold you guys too long, I'm not gonna give any useless information, just straight information that matters and stocks to look at. All right, always remember that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not advice, this is just what I'm personally doing. And always make sure to do your personal research on all of these stocks. All right, without further ado, let's get into last week's picks. Okay, so our first of the stock plays from last week was Evofem Biosciences, ticker symbol EVFM. There was a buy opportunity on Monday and Tuesday. It started running up hard on Wednesday. We saw it hit 3.7. It dropped down during that Thursday crash. Um, hit 3.2 i think the price was like 3.18 i actually loaded up at that price and we close the week at three dollars and 49 cents for a five-day gain of 5.76 percent now this stock in my belief is still one of the best plays in the market as their fexi launch comes out next week my full research was in last week's video but i expect some big things on this date this week should be huge for evfm and this is still one of my favorite stocks to hold and if it wasn't for this thursday crash type thing i think it would be trading around four dollars as of right now so our next stock from last week was Beacon Roofing, ticker symbol BECN. This was a play on the hurricanes, and we started running up from Monday to Wednesday. At Wednesday, we hit over $35, $35.20, and then we dropped on that Thursday date, as we know what happened there. Um, we ended the week at $33.50. Now, I believe that this is still one of the most undervalued stocks in the market. It has one of the best opportunities with everything happening with the hurricanes. There's going to be a lot of roofing supplies needed to rebuild places that were damaged by hurricanes. And there's a lot of weather issues coming up, so Beacon Roofing is still one that I'm holding strong. And then we had Ideonomics, ticker symbol IDEX. We finished the week down 11%, so this is a pretty rough week for IDEX. And with this one, I've been saying, it's not a matter of if, but when the stock starts to take off. Because this is one of the most underappreciated stocks in the market, there's still so many investors that are scared of this one. The reason because of all the fraud allegations earlier in the year, but we saw that arrest against Hinderberg, a guy that was working with them got arrested. So now that we know this company is not a fraud, it's just they're coming out with so much PR right now. Once the market starts to get excited about this again, which like I was saying, it's a matter of when and not if in my opinion. And I could see this stock hitting in the $2 range sometime this year. It all depends on the overall market, of course, the overall trend. Of course, it's gonna keep trending down if the market keeps on getting hit. But this is one that I think is a great value here and has a lot of upside. But of last week, this was a losing stock pick. Okay, those are my top three new stocks from last week. But the stocks that I was still recommending like crazy, the first one is Rocket Companies, ticker symbol RKT. Um, we saw this start running up. My thesis on this one was it was going to run up to the earnings date on Wednesday after hours. And we planned to sell right before earnings. So the stock group and I, we sold right before earnings. We took some huge profits right around $33. And then after earnings, we knew that everything was priced in. They would have to blow it out of the water. Now, it had impressive earnings, but not enough to blow investors out of the water. So for that reason, it got destroyed and ended the week down at $24.57, down 16%. So for that reason, we do not hold ultra-hyped companies through the earnings date. We sell before. We play the rumor and sell the news. So next up, we had Peloton, ticker symbol PTON. I was talking about this one all last week. So we started off the week right around $76. We had $91 at its highs. And of course, the Thursday drop got this one as well, dropping all the way down to $73. And then we closed the week at $80.63. I still do think this one has a chance to run up before earnings on Thursday. Now, personally, I will plan to sell out and take profits before the earnings call on Thursday after hours. The next one we've been talking about was Spartan Energy Acquisition Corp, ticker symbol SPAQ. This one's prime for takeoff whenever we get news about the merger. It was up 6% this week, and I'm still holding this one very strong. Next up, we had Foreign Merger Corporation, ticker symbol FMCI. This one absolutely took off this week, hitting a high of over $23 and closing the week at $21 after that big market dip, of course, but still a solid play right there, and I expect some big things from FMCI in the future. Next up, another SPAC play of ours, Lincadia Holdings, ticker symbol LCA. Very volatile this week, but closed the week at 4%. Not bad, and once again, this is news and catalyst dependent when we get news on the merger. And finally, the last one, OPS Acquisition Corp, ticker symbol OPES. As we know, this is the merger with BurgerFi. This was also a great performer for us. As we saw this, up 12.41% for the week. Pretty successful, and I see the stock with a chance to hit 18 to $20 when the merger happens, probably in late October. So of course, last week we had some winners, we had some losers. That dip on Thursday really hurt a lot of our portfolios. 
And for this week, we need a lot of preparation for what to do in each situation of what happens. So I'm gonna be bringing you guys one safe stock pick, one risky stock pick with a crazy amount of upside, and then one with an opportunity that the market has not realized at all yet. All right, so also stay tuned to the end of the video, and I'll give you my thoughts on what I'm gonna to do to hedge my portfolio against the market, and if I plan to short the market, and what I would do if I wanna bet against the market, my favorite play against the market as of right now. So make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video for that after my three stock picks. And a lot of those picks that I showed at the beginning of the video, I'm still holding strong and they're still top stocks for me this week, especially the merger plays. Those are my absolute favorite. I love EVFM for this week. Beacon Roofing is kind of a mid conviction trade as of now, as the hurricane plays have kind of simmered down. And IDEX, this is one that I'm just being patient on because the due diligence, the research speaks for itself. And like I was saying, the EV sector is gonna get very hyped very soon. This is a legit company, their products are legit. There's some big guys behind this company. So my thoughts on this one, I'm holding, I'm not treating it like a penny stock where I would cut losses quick, because this is a company that I actually really like their business models and what they're doing as a company. Okay, so first off, let's get to a stock that I believe has an opportunity that is not realized by Wall Street yet. So this is a play on the propane sector. Now I don't usually play the natural gas, but I think there's a huge opportunity coming up and it's very, very undervalued. So the first stock that I'm looking at in this sector a suburban propane partners ticker symbol sph now this is my favorite play i'm going to be talking about why in just a second the next stock that i'm watching but it's more of a penny stock a lot more risky i'm personally not as interested in this one this is feral gas partners ticker symbol fgpr the next stock is also penny stock ticker symbol t-e-l-l -L. the last one is ugi corp ticker symbol ugi and i'm not as interested in those past three either the stock that i'll be playing is suburban partners ticker symbol sph so i've talked about in a previous video of how sales of generators are skyrocketing due from the hurricanes and all the bad weather that's about to happen. So I was talking about the generators, but we have to think about something. What is filling up these generators? A lot of these generators are being filled up by propane. So let's take a look at G-Trends, how the big generator companies and generators are being looked at online. So we can see these are looks from the past 12 months. We can see recently generators have had a huge spike in research. Next up, we got Generac. As we know that Generac is the biggest generator company. This was stock that I was playing in the past, but it is just very inflated. And I believe that everything has a chance to be priced in already for this one. So for that reason, I'm still holding a very small position, but not a big position in Generac. Also, a thesis behind this one is we know that the virus is still going on. And when people go out to eat, guess what they do? A lot of people sit outside because it's so much safer and there can be more social distancing and it's just more safe to be outside in the open air. So fall gets kind of cold and then winter comes up and gets very, very cold. So what's gonna be heating up outside? Outdoor heaters. What do outdoor heaters use? A lot of propane heaters are used for things like this for outdoor patios. And this is a game changer in my opinion for what's gonna happen with propane and how the price could definitely rise. So check this out. Recently we had a spike in outdoor heating for G-Trends as well. This is obviously huge for the propane sector as propane has a chance to be very, very high in demand. So we got hurricanes, outdoor heating because of the virus. What else do we have with this stock? There's gonna be a chance that this is one of the coldest winters in a long time. Check this out. So this is the website of the Climate Prediction Center and they believe that there is about a 60% chance of La Nina development during Northern Hemisphere fall 2020 and contributing through winter of 2020 to 2021. And this is about a 55% chance that it contributes all the way till then. So what is La Nina? La Nina is sometimes referred to as the cold phase and these typically last nine to 12 months, but some prolonged events may last for years. This usually occurs every two to seven years. And with that 60% chance for La Nina happening, there's gonna be an even greater increase for propane for heating. So just all of these factors factor in for the propane price start to take off. And in my opinion, there's a very good chance this is low risk because this stock is very undervalued. And once again, my top play on this one is SPH. All right guys, so next up is a high risk, high reward play. This is one that I'm super bullish on for the next couple weeks, even though it has been dipping big and it is still pretty overvalued. And I bet you can guess what I'm about to talk about. Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA. So this stock is up absolutely huge this year after that March crash. It's been taking off lately after the split. This week was absolutely insane as it took off over 12% on Monday. And the rest of the week, this stock was tanking. Friday, we saw a slight recovery, but then a huge dip after hours when it was not included in the S&P 500. So am I playing this stock? Yes, I'm in pretty heavy with Tesla stock right now. And the reason because is a battery day. Battery day, in my opinion, is gonna be the most hyped event, in my opinion, that we're gonna see this year. Now for this strategy, I'm in a bunch of options for September 25th expiry. My strategy behind this is on September 22nd, after hours, battery day is gonna begin. 
So on September 22nd during market hours, I believe that first of all, Tesla's gonna have huge run up weeks before running up all the way to battery day. In my opinion, there's a very good chance of that happening unless we're having a full on market crash, which I do not believe will happen at all. We're just having a slight pullback. This is healthy. This is what we have to have for the bull run to continue. But anyways, I believe that we'll see a huge run up starting about two weeks before battery day. These options are gonna start taking off. And then on September 22nd, there's gonna be so much demand for these option premiums that my plan is to sell my options because the implied volatility will be so high. The premiums will be so high. We can make some crazy profits selling right before battery day. Now, if you wanna hold something through battery day and believe that Tesla will come out with some huge news, which I'm gonna be going through what they may come out with in just a second, but if you want to hold Tesla through, I would not hold options through because that is super risky. If Tesla did not do anything crazy during battery day, the stock will most likely drop, resulting in your implied volatility to go way down and then the option is almost worthless. So my big recommendation is if you're holding options playing battery day like me personally, sell right before battery day happens, take your profits because the implied volatility will be so high. But if you're a long-term investor, if you want to trade battery day, if you expect some huge things, I would hold shares through and not options. Okay, let's take a look at some predictions of what's gonna happen during battery day. So first one, the big announcement that most people are expecting is the million mile battery. This name suggests that the battery has a million mile lifespan, putting an end once and for all to the misconceptions that EV batteries don't last very long. So essentially, what the million mile battery would do, first of all, this would cause a crazy amount of hype just think about the name of million mile battery. This is pretty much saying that the battery is gonna last the whole lifespan of your car without being damaged, without not working anymore. So what this could turn into, in my opinion, this could make the cars that much more valuable because first of all, the car is gonna have such a longer lifespan because it's not gonna be the battery that fails, it's gonna be the car. So let's say that you own a Tesla for 20 years, the car finally gives out, but the battery is still going strong. You put 500,000 miles on it, but there's still 500,000 miles left for this battery to maintain working. Tesla could take that battery back, reuse it and sell it for cheaper, or this person could sell the battery, just making the car worth that much more. As you know, when the car does die, you're gonna get the battery out of it, selling that for much more. So this can make the cars more expensive. This could be an option for a premium option for Tesla. Also just the replacement, the selling of these batteries, this could be absolutely huge. So this is the most expected thing that we expect out of battery day. And yeah, just for that reason, the week or two before, there's gonna be so much hype behind this, being the first one to announce million mile battery, which I believe could very well happen. I would give this over 75% chance for the million mile battery to be announced. So the next thing that they might announce during battery day is cobalt free batteries. So this sounds very boring. This does not sound very exciting, but this is actually very big. So cobalt is one of the major reasons why EV batteries are so expensive. LFP batteries have a reduced density compared to lithium ion, but are cheaper to produce and have greater durability. So an announcement of their usage would be another huge step towards mainstream affordability for EVs. So using this, they could lower the price of their Teslas, make the production cost that much lower, make things that much quicker, producing more and more batteries, which equals more and more cars, which equals more deliveries. Now, when people first hear that Tesla may announce cobalt-free batteries, it's kind of lame, right? This is absolutely huge. This could multiply the revenue. This could help them reach just that much more. What if they came up with a car that was under $30,000? because they got the battery cost so low. So the next speculation of what we're gonna get is dry battery electrodes. This improves production efficiency by a factor of 16 and lowers manufacturing costs by up to 20%, both key factors when taking EVs to a mass market. So this acquisition could mean more cheaper batteries more quickly and potentially with greater range in the future. So this is just pure cost efficiency. This would be amazing for Tesla, the product, and the company just making it more profitable, making them just get that much larger margins and reaching a mass market of people who are looking for cheaper EVs. So just more production of these batteries and making it cheaper, making it cheaper for Tesla to produce. This is huge for this business. Also, there's speculation that Tesla may become a utility company. With Tesla's sizable supercharger network, it makes sense for the company to have more control over energy supply costs. A large installed base of power walls alongside being an energy company could allow Tesla to offer customers the ability to subscribe to a program where their house batteries sell power back to the grid at times of peak demand via Tesla as their electricity provider. There's a lot of speculation here, but joining the dots does imply direction along these lines. So this would obviously be a super interesting scenario if they open up a whole new business model. Very, very interesting. And I think this would get investors very excited about the future for Tesla and what more business models can they invent in the future. So lots of speculation around this one, but is Tesla planning an electric plane? Elon Musk has discussed the possibility of a Tesla plane earlier this year after rumors that one could potentially be in development. He denied that he was working on a plane for at least the next five years, 
but has stated that the energy density mentioned above is where electric planes start becoming viable. So there's unlikely to be a clear announcement about the Tesla plane at Battery Day, but they could leave some hints alongside statements about reaching the magical density level. So if they leave any hints about electric planes, I think this would be massive if they just announced that they're going to start working on it in five years. This makes so many more long-term investors be interested, makes so many more people just excited about the future Tesla, what can they come up with next? There's so much potential for this business, of the battery that they have, EV planes, this could be huge for the future of Tesla. And if they just leave any hints behind, investors are gonna pick up on that and invest heavily, resulting in a crazy amount of hype. So there's also expected new manufacturing processes in Berlin. Elon Musk is promising new painting systems and a revolution in body engineering when the Model Y starts production in Berlin. And one of the developments is supposed to be produce car bodies in fewer larger pieces to minimize welding, something that we saw with the unveilment of the Cybertruck, also lowering production costs while speeding up manufacturing. This clearly isn't a battery announcement, but with the Berlin Gigafactory to do a start production in July of 2021, it's highly likely that Musk will announce details of progress towards this goal at Battery Day. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys one more source that I was looking at about Battery Day. So the, this analyst believes that Tesla's sell cost is already sub $100 per kilowatt hour. That would be a very pleasant surprise for investors, says this analyst. Battery costs have been falling at a 23% average annual rate for the past few years. So that's massive, 23% reduction in Tesla's battery cost. This is huge, this just leaves much more room for profitability. As they make these batteries cheaper, cheaper to produce and more quick to produce. This is another thing that could be announced, just the price, how low they're getting the price for the production and just their margins are gonna be that much more large. So those are my thoughts on Tesla. Now, what could we see from Tesla this week? What do I think is gonna happen? Now, I think we could see one of two things. On Tuesday, we could see the start of the bounce back and then a full run up to battery day. I would give that about a 20% chance of happening. Now, what I think is the most likely scenario is we see Tesla have another slight dip on Tuesday, like down three to 5% around there. Then we see a bounce back on Wednesday and then up and down throughout the week. And the next week after that, then we start the huge run up, up to battery day with all the excitement. Everybody starts to get super excited and the hype starts for battery day. I think that's the most likely scenario. I would give that about a 50% chance. And the next scenario, this is the bad scenario of what could happen. We see the market just keep tanking. We see Tesla trending down right with the market, if not more than the market, going another 20% down this week. Now, personally, I think this is very, very unlikely, but there is always a chance that the market does take a dump again. But in my opinion, we are gonna see more of a quick bounce back from this market. I think a lot of people are gonna take this opportunity to buy the dip and just keep this bull run going until we get closer to the presidential election and then the volatility is gonna scare a lot of people off once again. So I'll give this chance of Tesla selling off this whole week, about a 10% chance. I don't think it's very likely. Then I'll give another 20% chance of Tesla just kind of staying even, maybe up and down 1% throughout the week and just not a lot of volume as people do not want to be risky with their investments. So those are my personal scenarios, what I believe is going to happen. I plan to hold Tesla strong all the way up until battery day, sell my options on battery day, and I may or may not hold my Tesla shares through battery day. I'll decide when I see the price action. When we get there, I'll be playing it by ear all the way. So those are my full thoughts on Tesla stock. I love this as an investment right now. Under 400 is an absolute steal. As I think we're gonna see some crazy hype. Battery day is gonna be the most hype date in the market that we've seen this year, in my personal opinion. All right guys, so we went through our unknown opportunity, which was the propane sector. Next up, we went through a high risk, high reward play with Tesla and the battery day hype. So what's the safe stock that I'm looking at with still a huge upside, but more of a long-term upside? This can be Bill Ackman SPAC ticker symbol PSTH. So we can see this stock covering right around 20 to $22. It's not gonna fluctuate much more than that until we get big news. But I think some big things could happen with this company and there's so much speculation around it right now. So first off, we have a big thing happening this week. On September 11th, which is gonna be Friday, the split is gonna happen between the warrants and the shares, allowing Robinhood users, Webull users, anybody that's not able to buy this back right now is gonna be able to purchase this starting on Friday. So this should add some more buying pressure from all the Robinhood users getting in on this. Who are excited about Bill Ackman's SPAC, the biggest SPAC in history. $4 billion behind this one. And there's just a lot of hype and speculation of what can happen when they merge and what kind of company they're gonna merge with. The absolute worst downside for this stock is $20, which is just like about a little bit less than $2 from where we are right now, and that would be a 10% loss. And the upside is absolutely massive, as we could have an upside of $50 plus pretty easily if they announce a huge merger. I've heard that Airbnb is still a possibility, even though it is very likely that Airbnb just goes with a straight IPO. So let's take a look at some news and speculation of what's gonna happen. So first of all, Ackman says, our goal is to buy a minority interest in a business. And what I mean by that is we're going to merge with someone. 
We're going to take them public and our shareholders will own 20, 25, or 30% of the company. We believe we can make an advantageous deal for our shareholders, really bringing a great opportunity for a company to accelerate its growth, deleverage the balance sheet, and provide capital for investors seeking to make an exit. A regulatory filing for the fund said it will target four areas for its acquisition. Mature unicorns, which are privately held companies with a valuation in excess of $1 billion, family-owned businesses, large private equity portfolio companies, as well as companies that would otherwise go public through a traditional IPO, but that might have experienced disruption thanks to the pandemic. So essentially what Ackman wants is a game-changing company. Now I've seen a lot of speculation. As we saw in this last article, one of the options was a family-owned business. I've seen a lot of speculation around Chick-fil-A going public with Ackman. Now personally, I do not think it's very likely as Chick-fil-A is not looking to go public, but if they were, I do think Ackman SPAC would be the best option for them. So that is obviously a possibility. I'll give that a very low chance of happening, but it's always a possibility and something that can add to the hype for Chick-fil-A going public, that would be absolutely massive as it's one of the most beloved restaurant chains there are. A couple more speculative options that we've seen, like I was saying, Airbnb is one. Also, I've seen a lot of speculation about how Elon Musk's SpaceX may go public with this back. Now, personally, I think this is a very low chance of happening. First of all, Elon Musk does not need anybody's help with money. This is now one of the richest men in the world because Tesla has just been making him billions every day, it looks like. So we know that Elon Musk doesn't need the help, but this is a possibility. So I've seen people rolling this out because SpaceX would be looking for a valuation around $40 billion, but Ackman is only looking to acquire 20 to 30% of this company. But if needed, Ackman would definitely raise the capital needed, or he could go with 10% of this company, who knows? but I think this is a very, very low chance of happening. One company that I think has a good chance of merging with this would be Stripe, as everything lines up, as Stripe's valuation is right at 36 billion, and they may need help going public. Now, who knows? It's very speculative. Also, there's some rumors about Planeteer, Epic Games. Those are a couple, and you can take a look at this list of the world's most mature unicorns. Now, personally, I would guess that Ackman goes with the US company, but who knows what can happen. There's a lot of scenarios. Most likely, I'd guess we get a merger news within the next six to eight months. Now, obviously there could be merger news at any time. And that's the upside with this stock. And also there's almost no downside as $20 is the downside. We're a little bit under $22 right now. So there's less than 10% downside and absolutely massive upside of 100% plus if they merge with a huge company. So the risk reward is great. This is a stock that's gonna take patience. It's gonna be flat for a long time until we get news, but there could be some added buying pressure as the shares will split. And on Robinhood, Webull, all those people can buy those. Just adding that little bit of more buying pressure that may move the stock just a couple percentage points. But it's a lot better than nothing as there's very, very little risk. Also, if the market does crash, this is one that's going to stay very steady. It's not going to drop below $20. So a very safe place to park your money as of right now. If you're scared of what's going to happen to the market, this is a very safe stock with huge upside if big things happen in the future. Now, the downside with this stock, we've seen that a lot of speculation has come out about how SPACs are not gonna be the future. Just straight IPOs are gonna be much more useful in the future and the SPAC revolution may be coming to an end. Now this could go either way, but I think people are gonna be using Ackman SPAC. This is gonna be huge. Now in the future, in a couple years down the line, SPACs may no longer be a thing, but I think Ackman's gonna take full advantage of what's happening right now and take a huge company public. This man is a genius. And recently he was on CNBC for a full interview on his SPAC. And one thing that he said really stuck out to me. He said that this entity becomes more valuable with more uncertainty. The worse the world gets, the better the deal we're able to make and more equity to our shareholders. So Bill Ackman, look him up. This guy has called what the market's gonna do many times. He was right about the crash this year. He's just a genius in the stock market. I feel very safe with him controlling the SPAC and I personally think he's gonna do some very big things as the SPAC is the largest valuation, the largest amount of funds raised in the entire world. All right, so next up, let's take a look at what I would do if I was to short the market and bet against the market. So we know that the NASDAQ is getting hit hard right now because it has been such a high value for so long. So TQQQ is what triples the NASDAQ movement. So every 1%, the NASDAQ goes up. This stock will go up 3%. So essentially, it does the exact same thing that the NASDAQ does, but it's times three. So what I would do is I would buy puts on TQQQ right out of the money, probably $140 puts if I was to buy today. And the premiums are super high because the volatility is so high for the NASDAQ, but I do think you get the best value as you get triple the leverage times the puts, which leverage money even more, controlling so many shares with not as much money as you would if you're just to short the NASDAQ. So next up, you could go with just the straight short against the NASDAQ. This is SQQQ, so everything the NASDAQ does, this does the opposite times three. So if the NASDAQ goes down 1%, this will go up 3%. So this is also an option. 
as you can play some call options on this one, leveraging your money even more. Make sure to be safe when betting against the market. A lot of mistakes can be made. And personally, I will probably not be betting against the market. I may have a slight hedge. I may sell a small amount of my positions if things keep on going bad. But personally, I'm still very bullish on the short term of the market. And when we get closer to the election, I'm gonna be a lot more cautious because the volatility will be very scary. There's gonna be a lot of scared investors. But for right now, I think we should get a quick bounce. I do think that was just a quick, healthy dip. Now, obviously, we could have a red week, but I would expect us to have some green days and some red days. I do not expect this market to have an absolute crash. Like we saw in March, this is not gonna be that instance at all. So personally, I will probably not be betting against the market, but if you wanna have a slight hedge, maybe betting against the NASDAQ, that's what I would do. And then just hold your long positions as well, so you'll benefit either way. If the market goes long, all the money you lose is just in your slight hedge but you still benefit on your long positions, not having to sell off any of your long positions. So it's up to you to decide if you want to bet against the market. It could go either way. None of us can predict the market. I gave you guys my thoughts, what I'm doing. And yeah, just everybody have a good week this week. Everybody trade smart. If you're interested in joining the private stock group, the link is down below. Every time I buy and sell a stock, I send a message. I send portfolio updates and just answer any questions that you have. Also, if you want to got two free stocks on Weeble, five free dollars on Acorn Investing, or 10 free dollars in Bitcoin, those links are down below as well. Please like this video, it helps me out a ton. Please subscribe, leave me a comment if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching guys. Thanks for all the support. Let's have a good week this week. Trade smart, don't get FOMO. Think through all your stocks. Have a thesis behind every play. All right guys, let's have a big week this week and let's get rich.